That's why all them preachers had Billy Graham in the White House. They'd always, ever, ever president, I think, last bunch, had Billy Graham up there. What do you think about this? They got that out of the Bible. They got that out of the Bible. They called God's man and say, what do you think about this? Should we start this war? I'm telling you, if I was a, if I was a leader of a country and we was thinking about going to war, and I mean, you're talking about thousands, thousands of people's bloodshed, I'd sure want advice from God's man. And from the Lord, I would, I'd, I'd, I'd say, what do you think? Do you believe the Lord's wanting us to do this or not? So anyway, this story revolves around this king. He's going to go to war, and he had 400 preachers to advise him. 400 great preachers. And every one of them said the same thing. Because every one of them was contemporary. Every one of them was modernistic. Every one of them was t tickle your ears, and one old boy stood against them. His name was Micaiah, and that's what this story's about. Now, I'm going to read a lot of scripture here, so follow me, and then I'm just going to go back and comment. Look at verse number 3. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead, going to go fight? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people is thy people. We will be with thee in the war. You're our ally, like America and England, America and Israel, or whatever. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. What does the Bible say about this? And therefore the king of Israel gathered together prophets 400 men. He got Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Church of God, fire baptized, Holy Ghost, snake handlers in Jesus' name. All of them got there. I mean Catholics. And he had, he had uh, Seventh-day disadvantages and Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and, and priests. And he said, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? And they, every one of them, they said, go up for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Notice these false prophets told him exactly what he wanted to hear. Beware of a preacher that just tells people what they want to hear. He's a crook. He's a crook. You can count on it. He's a crook. Bible said in the last days, they'll have teachers having itching ears. You just scratch it right there, preacher. We'll take care of you. You be good to us. We'll take care of you. It's a trade-off. And, buddy, God wasn't in a million miles of it. Now look at verse 6. Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord here? I don't know what he thought them other guys was. Besides that we might inquire of him. Here we go, verse 7. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, only one, the whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Plain, honest admission. Here's this king. There's this one other guy down here, but I hate him. That's a terrible way to talk about somebody. He hated him. Why did he hate him? Uh, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Imla, and Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. He said, chill out, man. You know, Jehoshaphat was kind of more right with God than Ahab, Ahab was. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, set either one of them on his throne clothed in their robes and they sat in a void place at the entering in the gate of Samaria and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenani, had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for the Lord will deliver it in your hand. Wow, isn't that something? Here's, here's he's on a big throne. He's on a big throne. They're on salary. They're, they're the king. He supported these men. They drew a salary of $100,000. I heard about a preacher today. He's 50 years old, makes $60,000 a year. That's what, maybe $1,200 a week, something like that, and preaches one time a week and don't visit or nothing. They don't have Sunday night service. And, and, uh, 
and then have, uh, uh, he has somebody else do it for him on Wednesday, and, and the guy's trying to get him to go visit him, and he said, I'm too old, 50, 50. Uh, that, that's one of these guys, like I'm talking about here. Uh, there's a church down in South Carolina uh, uh, where they, the guys, Moses didn't start until he was 80, by the way. Yeah. Hey, man, 80 years old when he started. Some of you little children here, only 30 and 40 years old, You'll, you're not even grown yet. Uh, uh, physically you are. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, he, 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 this guy down in South Carolina, Larry Brown said this guy, song leader, church was paying their song leader, I think uh, 70000 a year, which ain't a bad, bad limit, for nine songs a week. Three Sunday morning, three Sunday night, three Wednesday night. Took care of the music program. Didn't have to go settle marriage disputes. Didn't get cussed out on his answering machine. Nothing. Nine songs a week. Think about that. I'm going to start being a song leader. I don't have to get in all this mess I get into all the time. Uh, but you know what? I know preacher like Brother Smokey who works a full-time job and supports himself with his family and his wife works a job and her church got maybe 25 or 30 people in it and they pay the bills and he preaches God's word faithfully. Yeah. Now you tell me which one you'd put more confidence in of uh, that. Uh, they, so these guys said they all prophesied. Oh, hallelujah, king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. You're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. Oh, yeah, you're going to get a bonus. You're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to get a bonus. You're cool, king. They, you, me and you take, go to the bar after this is over with. Go to the Mexican bar and, and have a drink together. Yeah, This is all just like that. All rock music, all swaying and dancing and hallelujah this and that. The cool church. You go to our church, you can dress like you want to. You go to our church, you don't have to come on Sunday night. You go to our church and the preacher never says nothing judge. You go to our church, they're popping up in Morgan and just like that right now. You know why? Competition. Because say, you can go there and you don't have to do nothing. No demands put on you. You don't have to do, just show up and clap your hands and have a big time. That's what that was. And then the fur hits the fan. Look at verse 12. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good. See there? All they do is preach good. The prophets, good to the king with one assent. That means they all agree. Every one of them agrees that everything's fine. We're going to win. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak thou good. Whew. Hold your finger there now just a second. You know what they're telling him? Micaiah. If you got good sense, you'll just go along with all these other guys. Don't make no waves. Don't go in there, this hellfire, damnation, every sin, sin. Don't, no, that's out of style. Talk like them guys talk. You talk just like them. You got to bring your head. I preached yesterday at a um, Christian businessman's meeting over here in Morgan. Can you believe that? Uh, a guy to see me over there at the gym, and he asked me to come. He's asked me two or three times. And I finally went yesterday, and there was, there was guys there from a lot of different churches in Burke County. And I, I, was, I don't know what he wanted me to do, but I preached on how, you know, how I know there's a God and why you ought to be serving him. And, uh, and I gave him about 20 minutes there, and I said, Look, y'all, this is either true or it's not true. Yeah. It's either true or it's not true. If it's not true, we're taking money under false pretenses. If it is true, it's worth giving your whole life for. Right? I mean, it either is or it ain't. You can't go through your whole life saying, well, I'm just not really serving the Lord, but I love the Lord. You're, you're too scared to live wrong, too backslid to live right. That's a terrible way to live your life. If it's true, let's give everything for it. If it's not true, shut the doors of this place and let's sell it. Amen? That's right. Now, that's what they said. Now, my K.I., you just don't get out. Why do you have to be so abrasive? Why are you always, uh, that's inflammatory, the way you can be a good preacher. Look at all these other guys. Why do you have to be? Look what he said, verse 13. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Amen. There's your man right there. There's your man. He said, look, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. 
I ain't trying to be mean. I love the them prophets. I love the king. But whatever my God says, that's what I'm going to tell him. Yeah. There you go, people. There you go. There's your real preacher. I'm not saying that because I'm a preacher. That ought to be my goal, and it is my goal. It ought to be a preacher's goal that he's going to say what God said if it hair lips every person in the congregation and they throw you out on your ears. And it has happened. And it might happen again. Preachers have been thrown out of church. I've heard of a church one time uh, threw the preacher out and slung a Bible on him after he went out the door. I heard one where they voted him out out in the parking lot and voted him out while he's standing in the church pulpit. Uh, it happened, and uh, old Micaiah said, "Whatever God tells me, that's what I'm going to tell them." And when he was come to the king, verse fourteen, Micaiah, "Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead, or shall we do it or not?" And verse fifteen said, uh, "Oh, I'm sorry." Verse fourteen, he just said, "All right, nothing else to do. You go on and prosper." But he knew he wasn't being serious. He's just joking around with them. And the king said, how many times am I tell you, tell me nothing but the truth. That's where that comes from. Truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Look at verse 15. Nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord. And he said, okay, you want it? Here it comes. And brother, he reared back and got in gear. And he said, I did see all Israel scattered up on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. You're going to get killed, in other words, king. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel stomped and turned red in the face and said, didn't I tell you that he wasn't going to prophesy good unto me but evil? And he said again, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab? He's talking to Ahab when he says this. Who's going to deceive Ahab of Israel? They may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one spake this, one spake that. And verse 20 said, a, a, a spirit came and stood before the Lord. Now, how can a spirit stand before the Lord? Got feet? I reckon. A spirit came and stood before the Lord. So like a soul, the rich man in hell, eyes, ear, a spirit has that, but it doesn't have a body. Now, the spirit stood in front of God and said, what do you want me to do? I'll entice him. And verse 21, he said, I'll go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. So not only did Micaiah said, you're going to get killed, he turned around and said, every one of them guys is liars. Oh my goodness. Troublemaker. Division. Hater. Non-cooperative. Won't go along with everybody else. Why does he always have to be against everything? Listen, folks, do y'all think it's fun to walk around town and people say, there's that guy, he's against everything, everything's a sin. I don't like that feeling. But there ain't no getting out of it. There, if you preach the Bible, they're going to think that about you. And by the way, they're going to think about you if you live by the Bible and try to do right. They're going to think that about you. There's no, you cannot please God and please this whole world at the same time. It's in, it cannot be done. I don't think you ought to try to cause trouble. Here's, here's 400 men say, it's a great idea. Go up and win, king. And this guy said, uh, if you go up there, you're going to get killed and all them liars. <whistles> Lord, Lord have mercy. You know, the Lord's always done that. Here's Noah, one man. Everybody else was wrong. He thinks he's right and everybody else is wrong. Guess what? He was right and they all wrong. He was right. Ahab did get killed. On over there in verse, verse uh, 34, the last verse of the chapter, he did get killed. He got shot. But let me read just a little bit more and then I'll give you a couple of thoughts. Uh, he's a lying spirit. And then, you know what happened? Look at verse 23. Zedekiah, the son of Chanani, came near and took up a great love offering for Micaiah. What does it say? Somebody tell me. Smote him on the cheek. This goes, bam! That was his love offering for this revival at the king's church that day. <laughs> Here he's sitting there saying, you told me to tell you what the Lord said and I do and you hit me in the face. Boy, you don't know how many times I felt like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, here, here they, they, you got people say, Oh, we want a preacher that'll tell it like it is. Mm-hmm. 
you start telling it like it is, really, and be, you'll find out right quick. What they mean is, we want a preacher that, that's entertaining and talks about everybody's sin but mine. That's what they mean. And then you done quit preaching and gone to meddling. I, you know, if, if a preacher preaches hard, people say he's mean. If he preaches soft, they say, well, he ain't much. There's no pleasing people. I've been doing this 40-something years, y'all. There's no pleasing people. I don't care. You can fast. You starve to death. Uh, you can sc- if you scream and holler, you need to calm down a little bit. If you don't, you're dead and ain't got no spirit. I mean, uh, you know, uh, if you run around like I do, you're emotional and try to control yourself. If you stand still, you're boring. And, I mean, it don't matter what you do or don't do, people are going to fuss about it. Uh, Look at here. He said uh, they smote him on the cheek, man, smacked him. And and they said, where did the Spirit of the Lord go? And he said, you'll find out one day when you go hide yourself. Verse 25, the king of Israel said, take Micaiah and carry him back to Anon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in prison. Had him locked up unsubstantially. He didn't deserve to be locked up. Feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction affliction until I return in peace. You ain't going to return in peace, buddy. God's man doesn't tell what's going to happen to you. And he said it. He said, if you do return in peace, the Lord ain't spoken by me. He said, put him in prison until I get back and we'll shout to victory. And Micaiah said, if you do come back, I ain't a real preacher. Good night, man. You know what I love about God's men? About the guts they got. The backbone. Glory. Yeah. There's something in, in me that respects a man with a backbone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just got to go. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, he stood against that whole crowd and said, listen, throw me in prison. Slap me on the cheek. You told me to tell you what the Lord told you, and I did. What's your problem? I know what it is. It ain't what you want to hear. That's your problem. Right. That's your problem right there. Amen. You know, if you went in the average church today and preached the Bible as it is, you would tear it all to pieces and they'd throw you out. You know, the average, I've come to the conclusion the average preacher today don't even believe in hell. They either don't believe in it or they're mean as a devil. Because if you really believed hell's real, you'd tell people. If you really believed they're going there. If I thought y'all was going to fall off a cliff when you were out of and I, you don't think I'd tell you? I'd scream, I'd holler, I'd beg you not to go out there. And if I know it, and don't tell you, I'm a crook and a half. And there, there, you, you will not hear a preaching on hell by radio preachers. You, most of them, you will not hear it on TV. There ain't one, I think, uh, there's maybe two or three TV preachers that'll get on it once in a while, and I thank God they do. Most of them won't touch it with a 30-foot pole. All they talk about is, is uh, you're going to prosper, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be prospered, you're going to be blessed. It's money, send this money. Seminar, uh, how, to, uh, how to make your husband do what you want him to do. That's basically their ministry. And uh, I know you don't like that, but yeah, that's because you ain't listening good. And, and some of them guys, their ministry, like that Jimmy Evans guy, he's a pretty good marriage counselor and don't believe in hell. Don't believe he said he did. And I hate to name names, but that's a false prophet, brother. Yeah. Amen? I want him telling tell me how to be a husband. Man, don't even believe the Bible. Yeah. Now, don't y'all start doing like, don't smack me on the cheek. Guy's got some good advice, but don't believe in hell. Well, quit being a preacher then if you don't believe in hell. Well, anyway, uh, throwed him in prison. Well, anyway, they went up there. And Jehoshaphat sort of got right in verse 31, and God helped him. And king of Israel, Ahab, kept on running his mouth. And verse 33, they smote him between the joints of the harness, shot him with a bow and arrow or something, and they took him out of the host. And in verse 34, he died. He died. Now, just a couple of observations, and we're going to go. First, people need to be taught, and it's hard for me to do because I am the preacher. We need some other preachers, Sunday school teachers, something that people need to be taught how to respect and honor and hear God's man. Please don't say, I, I'm not out, I ain't no glory, I ain't no ego, I don't need my ego fed. I know exactly what I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm not trying to, but I'm telling you, you need to teach your kids you respect God's man. 
whether it's me, whether it's somebody up here in the, in the camp meeting, you ask my girls all their life, ask them. I said, you treat God's man right. When we have a dinner, you let him get in front of you and get his food. You shake his hand. And, and they go home and say, Daddy, I didn't like this. I said, shut up. We're not going to say one word against God's man. A lot of kids grow up not listening to the preacher because they've heard mom and daddy cut him down, cut him down, cut him down, and, and, and have roast preacher for dinner on Sunday evening, and then they wonder why the kids don't want to go hear him when they get 10, 17, 18, 19. Well, he, 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 uh, you ought to teach them to respect him. You ought to teach them to honor God's man and to listen to him. Make your kids set up and listen during preaching. Make them. Say, you're going to sit there and you're going to listen to what that man says. Yeah. Amen? That's right. Now, uh, two or three things right quick and I'm done. First, God has always had a man. He always had. It's always in a minority. One to 400 in this case. 400 to one was the odds and he, he of course, was right. And God's man usually, listen to me, every man of God in the Bible and out of the Bible usually has some major reason in his life that you should not listen to him. There's usually something that people can point out and say, I ain't listening to him. Peter, Moses, David, Paul, his education, there's always something. Well, I ain't listening to him. Look what he, he, he done this or he's that or he's too educated or not educated. There's always something in a great preacher's life that gives people an excuse not to listen to him. Every time. God allows that. So if you want an excuse, you can find one. All right? Number two, his job is to tell you what God said. Now listen, folks, let's get it through our heads here tonight. My job, if I'm a man of God, is to tell you what God said. That's my job. Never get mad at a man for telling you what God said. Sometimes preachers get in the flesh. I've done it. Sometimes preachers, uh, their own personality does so, and I've done it, and I'm sorry, and I ask forgiveness every time I've ever done anything, or maybe said something in the wrong spirit, or maybe hurt somebody uh, by my own work, and I'm, I've done that, and I've done that a lot of times. But I'm telling you one thing, brother. When a guy gets up here and he reads this book right here, and he preaches it right and rightly divides it and straight, you, you better thank God for that. Yeah. You better thank God for that. Yeah. We got people in, in New Mexico watching right now that would give anything in the world if they could live just close to a preacher that would tell them what God said, y'all. Amen. I don't claim to be nothing special. I'm not. There's a million reasons not to listen to me. But I'm telling you one thing here. I am committed to telling y'all what this book says. And if you catch me out of it, help me. Sit down and say, Brother Danny, I ain't trying to be ugly or nothing, but... Uh, what did you mean when you said this? Da, 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 da. And, and let's get it straight. Yeah. I want it straight. Amen. I want the book straight. I want it right. Amen? Yeah. That's right. It, it don't matter if, if, it's, uh, if it fits. It don't matter if it's accepted. The modern emergent church, this Brian McLaren, uh, McLaren fella, I'm going to be showing you him and letting you listen to him. He's one of the leaders of the emergent church movement. And the emergent church is all this modern day evangelist. He was voted like one of the 10 top evangelicals, whatever in the world that is. We get called that a lot. We're, I ain't an evangelical. I am a Bible-believing Christian. That's what I am. We're not evangelicals. Uh, that's what the, the world, they don't even know we exist. They're talking about people like, you know, big shots in, in politics and stuff. The world don't even know we exist, y'all. Bible-believing Christians, much of uh, most of us. But anyway, um, they're, they're saying this. They're saying, they're saying what we need to do is make the church relevant to this generation because what we're doing is not working. Now, I got something to say to that. It don't matter if it's working or not. God didn't call us to make it work. God called us to be faithful to preach this book. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Doesn't matter. Amen. Forgive me for getting into preaching mode here tonight, but I'm telling you what, brother, if there's anything I can't say, we got to change the gospel to fit this. No, we don't. No, we don't. 
No, we don't. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having air conditioning. There's nothing wrong with uh, using a, a screen and, and equipment and uh, internet and everything. But we are not going to change this message to fit what this generation wants. His job, he said, my job ain't to tell you my opinion. He might have thought he would win. It ain't to tell you like, I don't like you, I do like you, it don't matter. My job is to tell you what God said. I'm going to tell you something, whether it's me or anybody else. You better thank God for a preacher that will tell you what God said. He's helping you. He's helping you get ready for the judgment one day. Amen? That's right. Now, another last thing, a couple things right here. He, he's never loved. God's man is never loved by those who don't want God. Never is. Never has been. J. Frank Norris is the granddaddy of the independent Baptist movement. I'm telling you, they hated his guts. Uh, you can get Billy Sunday, they hated it. Lord have mercy. They made Elmer Gantry, that book and movie, Elmer Gantry was a mockery, a parody of the life of Billy Sunday because he preached against liquor so hard. This world has never liked a man of God. Don't happen. Don't happen. I'm telling you, brother, he's never loved by the Lord. They hated Billy. They hated J. Frank Norris. They they accused, uh, burned his church down, and accused him of doing it. They tried to lynch him downtown in Fort Worth. That old boy, he had a touch of God on him. I mean, you you can trace the history of the Independent Baptist movement back to J. Frank Norris and the First Baptist Church of da uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and Temple Baptist up in Detroit, uh, Michigan. He's never loved by those that hate God. He's almost always negative, very seldom positive. And the world's always saying, why can't you be like the TV preacher? Why can't you be like the cool pastor in town? Why can't you just, I mean, why, why do you have to be so different? Well, the last thing I'm going to say is, God stood by what the man said. Wasn't popular. But it was right. It wasn't accepted, but it was right. He did, he did fail. He did get killed. I don't know whatever happened to Mike A.I. He didn't get no $70,000 a year, I guarantee that. But I guarantee you one thing, buddy. That old boy went home to be the Lord, and the Lord said, that a boy, you, you told him what I said. And the king did die. He did die. Now, there's story after story after story of people who stood against God's men. I've always taught my girls, you don't stand against God's men. If I really believe a man is a man of God, and I think he's wrong on something, I, if you ask me about it, I say, well, I think he's wrong on this, 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 but I ain't going to get up here and attack him. I'm scared to. Honest to goodness, I'm scared to. I've seen too much. I've seen too much happen when people come up again. Even if he's wrong, you got to be careful. I'm not talking about sinning. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about uh, you, you got to be careful, people. You remember Moses back there in the Old Testament? And he married the Ethiopian woman, and his brother and sister said, You shouldn't have married her. You shouldn't have married her. You know who the Lord hit? He didn't touch him and that woman. He hit them. He hit them. Let that be a lesson to you. Let that be a lesson to you. You better be careful. You better be careful. When I named that guy a while ago, I wouldn't attack him if I thought he was a man of God. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say nothing. If I thought he was God's man, I wouldn't say a word. But you listen to me. There was a preacher, a pastor in a church, great church, and when God's moving and the big revival's going on, it's even more dangerous because it's like Ananias and Sapphira stuff. There was four men made a conspiracy to stop the preacher from what he was trying to do. Four men got together. One of them walked into a business a few days later and fell dead. Another one was rushed to a hospital. This is a true story. And in a few hours, he was dead. A third one got in an airplane and went in and crashed all within a few weeks. Those four men had got, you say, what happened to that fourth one? I don't know, but I know what I'd done if I'd been to him. 
I don't want the preacher to say, look, I'm sorry, you lead, I follow, I shut my mouth. He said, I'd never tell a preacher. Okay, okay, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. That's the way God works this thing. You, I know some of you people, you can, nobody can tell you nothing. You know it all. Nobody can tell you. You, you better thank God uh, for, for a preacher. It doesn't matter if he's 10 years old and he stands up here and tells you to live right, serve God, you better thank God for it. And I'm telling you, if the Lord lets you have a preacher, and I ain't much, but I, I, you know what I learned? I learned to follow my pastor. I learned that when I first got saved. I learned to follow him. God leads a pastor, and he and I learned to follow him. If I if I broke my vocal cords and I could never preach again, I tell you what I'd do. I'd take my family and I'd get in a good Bible believing church somewhere, and I'd try to follow that preacher everything he said, and I would try to alleviate him of trouble. I'd try to be faithful to the church, and I'd try to take up for him when he ain't around. I would. That's what I'd do. I, I, I hear some doing that here once in a while. But listen, ain't, the world ain't going to help us. We better stick together in this thing. Uh, one deacon in a church, big Southern Baptist church is going to have revival, and there's going to have old John R. Rice back in the heyday for, re, for a great revival campaign. And one deacon in the church went against it. Uh, I've had that happen to me too. Not here in this church. Our deacons have never... Never opposed me on nothing. But uh, uh, at the other church I did. And I uh, had one deacon didn't like something I said or did and quit putting his tithes in the offering. Started sending the missionaries every month and thought he was still doing right and not supporting the church. I had this deacon here, he went to some of the people and he went to the pastor and said, I don't think you ought to have him because we're Southern Baptists and he's independent and I'm afraid he's going to pull our church away from supporting the cooperative program that Southern Baptist churches uh, support. And he talked to some of the people and he said, I'm going to call a meeting, the deacon did, and we're going to stop this revival or, or get it cut short. And he started talking to people, let's stop it, let's stop it, let's stop it. Well, the day of the revival come and... The visiting evangelist plane landed, and a few minutes later, that guy dropped dead with a heart attack. Sure did. That's a fact. You say, that's a coincidence. Maybe it is. Maybe it ain't. It's, you say, that ain't biblical. Read Acts chapter 5 if you think it ain't. Ananias and Sapphira. Y'all don't know how hard this is for me to do. I don't want y'all to think, oh, he's a preacher. He thinks he's God. I ain't nothing special. I'm, I'm the sorriest person in here. I'm a chief of sinners. I got all that. But I'm just trying for your benefit and for your kids. Learn to respect and listen to God's men. Whether he's on the radio, whether he's in person, whether he's camp meeting or whatever. All right, let's bow our head for prayer. Oh, Miss Desi.